Hey guys, welcome back to Music Talk with John. Today I'm showing you some new grabs as well as a Record Store Day update. I was able to listen to all the albums that I bought on Record Store Day, Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, and I can kind of tell you what I thought about them. Some were first time listens, and I can also let you know the quality of the recording and what I thought about the, the overall sound. We're going to begin with... John Lee Hooker. This thing sounded really good. John Lee is on his game. It's just a great album if you like the blues and especially John Lee Hooker. I'm bad. Like Jesse Jane. So it was Record Store Day, Friday, um, live at Caf uh, Cafe Agogo. Uh, 140 gram, high quality virgin vinyl. And just not a pop on it. Sound was good. And I definitely recommend it. I think there was still one sitting in the store. It, it was pretty wild because I, I hadn't um, really noticed it, so I didn't have it on my list. So when I went into the record store, uh, I saw it there. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not, there's no way I'm going to jump in front of people or anything and grab something. So I waited. I waited for everybody that was officially in line with a ticket, and nobody grabbed this thing. And there were three of them, so there were still three sitting there. So I was able to go and, and look and go, you know, pick between the three, you know, I'm looking at everything, make sure everything looks cool and uh, picked up a copy. And I think there's still one there. So this is like a, I don't know why people didn't grab this, but I'm glad I got my copy. The next one was the 13th Floor Elevators. And I'd listened to this one before because I have their other two albums, their reissues. And I like the 13 floor elevators and I gave this one a listen. I think this was their third and final album. And I noticed, um, I, I thought they were getting a little bit away from the psychedelic, but there's still quite a bit of psychedelic in here. But it's good 60s rock. This was, uh, when was this, 69? Yeah, 1969 that this came out. I was going to look it up and see what uh, Bull of the Woods means. I don't know where they got the title from. It's interesting. Overall, um, this was another one that sounded really good. No clicks, no pops, nothing on this thing. I was just very happy I picked this up. So I kind of completed my 13th Floor Elevator collection. There's a live album out there, and I, I listened to that at one point. I didn't really care for it that much. I like their re um, studio recordings, I guess, more. But that doesn't mean in you know a year from now I hear it again and go, oh, man, why didn't I pick up that live album, right? That always happens. But uh, this... This came out um, really good. This is on white color vinyl. Very glad I picked this one up. Then on my on my other channel, Strange Brew Reactions, people give me songs to listen to. And it's, uh, I do a walk and talk is what I call it. I'm always out walking around. And people actually like it when I stop and listen. It means they're like, oh, you're really checking that song out. Um, and this is one of those songs. It was called Shipbuilding. Is it worth it? Elvis Costello. It came off of this album, Punch the Clock. And it's just weird. I'd never seen this album before. It does have um, Every Day I Write the Book on it. Every day, every day, every day, every day I write the book. So I knew the song, but I didn't know what album it was on. Nothing about that. I think I had a compilation on CD at one point of Elvis. Somebody gave me Shipbuilding which is the last song on side one here. And I really liked it. It's just funny how these things happen, right? Maybe I would have not even noticed it or something, but since it's on my radar, since listening to it so recently, I'm flipping through the used record and all of a sudden, boop, this pops up and it's clean. Like no issues with it. I got it home. It played fine. So I'm very glad I picked this up. There are a lot of good songs on here. I just, you know, I don't, I'm not that familiar with the album yet. I did listen to the whole album and enjoyed every bit of it. So I'm glad I have this. And I think, I think this is my first Elvis album. Could be. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much by him. And he's coming to town like in January, early next year. So I might be able to go see him. I always liked Elvis Costello. I just never really gave him a lot of attention. This one I picked up. This was not a record store day thing, but I got this one. And it was interesting. It, it is an official 
Hendrix release. It's him at the Hollywood Bowl. Came out a couple weeks ago. Interesting song choices. Um, Sergeant Pepper is on here. It was twenty years ago today. Sergeant Pepper told the band to play. Wild Thing is on here. So it's a good album. The recording, I guess it was right off the board. This is probably the weakest in quality that I've picked up with a you know Hendrix. Um, it's a Hendrix family thing, but it's the authorized Hendrix family edition. Yeah, it usually has this sticker on it, and that usually tells you. So all the other ones that I've picked up are really, really good sounding. This isn't horrible, but there's a lot of unbalanced things. What is cool about it is uh, it, it starts off with this introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. KHJ Radio and the Mamas and Papas welcome you to the Hollywood Bowl. He was opening for the Mamas and Papas, which is wild, almost as wild as him opening for the Monkees. You could tell there was a little something going on between him and the audience. Uh, they probably weren't there to see him, and you could tell he was like being sarcastic towards them, but kind of in a cool way, because Jimmy was always cool. I like to say, uh, we don't mind if you laugh, as long as you laugh in key, you know? So, and there was a lot of, like, feedback, or like when you pull the guitar cord out of your guitar and pop it back in, that kind of popping sound and tuning. Right now, it's tune-up time, so if you just relax one second. I don't know if he was doing that to annoy the audience or what he was doing, but uh, that's there. And I liked it, because it put me at the concert in a way. So it's a it's an enjoyable listen, not the highest quality, but for Hendrix fans, I would say pick it up. You know, that's just my opinion on it. And it comes with a deluxe uh, 12 page booklet, uh, unseen photos and an essay, which I haven't read yet. And um, yeah, so cool pickup. This next one is a record store day pickup. It is uh, Nora Jones playing along. Now this is from, I believe I have it correct. This is from her podcast that she does. I haven't listened to everything, but I've listened to a couple of them off of Sirius. It's, it's interesting. So I guess she took some of the songs from different artists and put it on here. And there's some really cool ones, but there's one that just, it's like, there's kind of like two, but one, I'm just like, really, you had to put this on here. Muzzle the Bees is awesome with her with Jeff Tweedy. I like roller coasters. I've always wondered why people rode the biggest roller coasters. I'm not going to try to pronounce her name right here and it sounds like she's a poet why the feeling brought up some type of excitement that they didn't receive on a regular day it's about being on a roller coaster and going why do people get on those things i've always wondered why people rode those really big roller coasters and i remember i remember when i did they're scary and then she's talking about being on the roller coaster and the thrill of it it's the butterflies and the fireflies and, and feeling life by being on a roller coaster the light between their wings. so it's really cool but i like that one a lot friendship with mavis staples is good uh I like that one mark riblet riblet I, I forgot his name how to pronounce it but everybody say goodbye so he is a dj and he had like i did a walk and talk on my other channel for the, I think the Essential Workers song. It's okay. He's a DJ. It's always kind of like that dance kind of techno music. So I could have probably done without it. It's an okay song. But yeah, I could have done without her doing that with him. But I get it. She's exploring different avenues. And that's what Nora does. So I get why she did it. You know, she's trying. She does dip her toes into different things. My toes just touch the water. My toes just touch the water. The one I didn't like at all. There's Fade Away with Logic, and it's he's just like throwing F-bombs left and right, and it's it's like kind of ruined the feel and the flow and the classiness of Nora, you know, to me. Um, and, you know, maybe I'm going to get butchered for that, but I just didn't, I don't know. I just, I wasn't feeling it. And if he threw one or two, but it's like, yeah, he was just throwing it all over the place. And then he's, and I don't really like when artists do things with rap artists that much i don't like the the style i don't like the feel of it i'm glad it's the first song on side b because i can go right to the second song and finish the album it's not like it's in the middle so that's just one i didn't care for definitely like set me down on a cloud with lucas nelson is a is a one that sticks out and that falling song with uh rodrigo armante yeah and brian blade yeah i, I like the rest of those songs all right this one was killer kiko los lobos 
friend of mine's going to smile at that because for years I call them Los Lobos. Why? I don't know. There's no A in there. Los Lobos. Kiko, great album. Um, try, I want to go back and get familiar with these songs. I know Dream in Blue. Deep inside a open door. Angel with Angels with Dirty Faces, great sound. Kiko and the Lavender Moon. Great atmosphere on that song. Kiko and the Lavender Moon. Yeah, and when the circus comes, yeah, that's a great song too. Could have had a chance to get out of this yeah, this is a three LP set. The third LP is uh, Kiko Session Outtakes. So there was, um, you had outtakes and um, the very last side of the third album were jams. And it was cool. I got to go back and listen to it and um, really absorb it. But there's a reggae groove, a blues riffing on there, and then jam one and two, and there's some drum stuff going. So, and they were kind of laughing and all that. So it's cool. You like, you get in the room with those guys and kind of feel the creative Thing that was going on but this this was excellent they did a good job with it not a click a pop anything on this album very happy with it so i'm glad this is in my collection uh this one so i'm all over the place right i don't think i have any jazz in here that's the only thing got my blues pop rock and all that and here's my i guess my metal uh ozzy bark at the moon just i have it i have uh the other two um i'm drawing a blank right now um same paranoid but that's black sabbath uh his other two big ones there with uh randy rhodes um just right out of my head right now but anyway have those other two and now this one and uh was it jakey lee yeah jakey lee is took over the guitar on that i don't know if this was the first album he did after randy rhodes passed away but uh bark at the moon i always like that song rock and roll rebel great song Waiting for Darkness, I liked. It's it's a good album. There was one that was kind of very dated. It was piano and it's kind of a ballad. And it's, it's a good album though. I, I I was really happy with this album. You know, when I'm getting that mood for Ozzy, I've just always liked Ozzy's voice. It does come with a poster. Uh, I'm assuming it originally came with the poster. Ozzy with a I think that's Ozzy, right? Yeah. With the crazy eyes right there. Just a, it's a fun album. It's a cool album. Happy to add this one to the collection. And this next one, you know, it, it's it's funny. For years, I thought I didn't like this album. I don't know why. Maybe it was the by the third album, but for some reason, I I just had in my head that I didn't like this album. Versus by uh, Pearl Jam, their sophomore album, and I I saw it. It was they had a good they had a Black Friday thing going and. Um, it's a Target exclusive on clear vinyl. And I'm like, let me listen to that one again. So streamed it, listened to it, and I'm going, I like that song. Oh, I like that song. Oh, I, so I'm like, get through the album. Like, why didn't I think I liked that album? Really weird. So picked it up and uh, very glad I did. Uh, you know, Go is a good song. Animal, Daughter. Uh, I like Glorified G. <laughs> Elderly woman behind the counter in a small town. Hearts and thoughts, they fade, fade away. Yeah, just, yeah, really good album, solid. So I was, I was happy I picked this one up and uh, glad I gave it a, a second try. This one, I already had it, but I went ahead and picked up this anniversary edition of it. I don't think there were extra songs on it. No, they just, they just redid it and they had it on um, colored vinyl ruby ruby colored vinyl but yeah and mojo is one i need to get back into it's just one of the later albums i really didn't get into and then when he passed i got back into tom petty more and it was funny because i kind of came into the middle of his career so pretty well i wouldn't say it's still early but it was the 80s part of his career and then wildflowers and then i kind of lost touch with him a little bit and just stuck with those main albums of tom petty's uh into the great wide open uh southern accents Wildflowers, those albums were the big one. Oh, and Full Moon Fever. Just kind of stayed within that range. 
And then when I started getting into records, I did work my way back and got his early stuff. And then eventually I got into his late, later stuff, but I'm not that familiar with that real early and then anything after like what mid nineties or so. But this is a cool album, a lot of guitar work on it, uh, blues bass kind of guitar, heavier, just a really good, good album. First Flash of Freedom I like a lot. On our first flash of freedom, I called out your name. Trip to Pirate's Cove is fun. I took my few belongings, we headed out to Pirate's Cove. It's another album I need to just listen to. I like it when I listen, I liked it when I listened to it. But I got to get familiar with it, you know what I mean? To know all the songs, go, oh, that song, you know? Just need to take some time with it. And I, I'm kind of going to do that. I think that's my plan this the, coming up this year. Got some albums coming in, and I'm going to do a video on that. My first uh, sort of, I think it is my first time ordering online. Never done it before, and it was a, a stressful experience, but not bad. Uh, so I'm going to go into that. But I think I'm going to calm down on this buying and all that and really get through these albums. It's something I've trying to do for a while uh, but i keep bringing stuff in and i just don't get familiar with a lot of things so i need to do that and i think that's i want that to be my plan going into the new year anyway pick this bad boy up folks at uh, kingfish were very kind and just gave me this copy i was there i was gonna um buy it and uh they were like you know just take it maybe because i go in there every thursday and i help them film their uh, new release video and I, I was there for record store day and all that so i do the filming for them and i do it because i i just love being a part of a record store and um you know they were just nice enough to go hey thanks and gave me this and it's uh it's traffic it doesn't say traffic on it uh, i looked it up but there is the traffic uh, symbol so i don't know if there's a contract thing going on or whatever but it's a live album welcome to the canteen you got all your members here and just just great like live versions of stuff. Dear Mr. Fantasy is great and give me some love. And so that's all on just those two songs on side two. And no pops on this thing. No issues with it. So yeah, just a fun album to put on. And I don't know if it's an original or not. I got to look it up. But uh, when did this come out? I'm not sure. Well, it was recorded in 71, July 71. Fun album traffic welcome to the canteen and then the last one i have to show you is a just one i was dying to get for record store day and it turned out to be well worth it it's now i never listened to before i knew a couple songs off of it um like whiskey river whiskey river take my mind bubbles in my beer i knew it has two leon russell songs it has uh, you look like the devil and a song for you which i love Willie does a great job with it. Well, I've been a lot of places in my life and time. I like Leon Russell's version. Obviously, he wrote it. But my favorite by a stretch is, uh, by Miles, is um, Ray Charles when he did it on um, My World. I've been so many places in my life and time. It was, a, it was an album that came out in the late 80s, or early 90s. And the rest of the album wasn't that great. It was like overproduced. I think Quincy Jones did it. And, he, you know, you don't want like fake drum beats and all that with your Ray Charles music. And there was a lot of that in there. But he had two two really good songs that stood out on that album. A song for you was one of them. And it was just, yeah, amazing. But Willie does a good job. And there's also a, and I think it's just him with acoustic. So you have the whole album here. And then you get a second album with this. And it has alternate takes and things like that. What I'll tell you here, Willie's groundbreaking 1973 album with second LP of AI yeah, outtakes and alternates from uh, the album session. So it's, it's fun to listen to it. Willie's in prime there. Just a really good album. Nice gatefold. It's on black vinyl. Just, just a good album. So I'm glad I picked that up. That's what I have for you guys. Uh, let me know what you think about those or your record store day experience. If you got any of those albums or any other albums, I would like to hear from you. Any of my other pickups, they're my new and used stuff. I'd like to hear from you. That's it, guys. So until next time, hope you guys are enjoying your music and you take care out there, all right? Bye.